Hey guys, I'm here at Henson Studios today. I'm actually having a uh, record meeting for my new record that's getting ready to come out. It's called Gasms. And uh, so I got the people from the record company here today and we're all gonna give a listen to it as a pre-release party. And uh, that's what I'm doing. the album to be something that causes or that caused uh, controversy uh, when people heard about it, you know. The listening party is important because now this is a chance for you to present your record to the people who are going to be your partners. These are the people that are going to work the record. And um, every department, once they take it all in, you go through every department and you kind of get their feedback. You give them a chance to say whether they love it, hate it, or whatever. You also read the room to see how engaged people are. Every time I hear it, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to go in the studio and look over his shoulder, you know, with the rest of the records. Ah, I think you should do this. I mean, do what you do, then we'll do what we do. You know? I felt like we needed to have a listening party because it's important it's important to set up a listening party especially for your label because first of all they had not heard the record uh smokey worked on all of these records and you know in his own time in the course of i don't know a year two years or something like that in the five oh <laughs> course of five years <laughs> yeah. have been putting this together you know yeah. while he's on it which to be honest with you i think that's the proper way because Music sometimes is about part of your travel, it's your journey, you know. So along that journey, he put together this project, and myself, you know, like I was hearing it along the way. He would come to the house, we jump in the truck, and we would listen because the best place to listen to music is in your car. Yes, you know, indeed. that's the best yes, place to yes. listen to. So he take the golf clubs out, <laughs> <laughs> he pile in the truck, and and go. I wanted people to wonder what it is that I'm talking about gasms and other, because like I've been saying, most people when you mention gasms, orgasm is the, it's the one gasm that they know about that they think about, you know, but gasms is all good feelings. A lot of people don't know, I had this conversation earlier with, uh, with, with your kids actually, a, a lot of these young kids don't understand love, you know, because what's their reference? What's the point of reference? Where are they, where are they getting it from? You know, right, the TV. Yeah. You know, and like sometimes it's like, you know, like sometimes um, love is like, you know, there's levels to it. There's layers to love. You also read the room to see how engaged people are. Because if I saw someone that was just sitting around picking this stuff, I would instantly texting. say, yeah, texting <laughs> and stuff like that. It's like I would instantly know that this guy or girl is not into this project the way I need them to be. I need everybody to feel like I feel. You know, like Smokey feels about this record. So it's always a good thing when you get a big response from the room, you know, and you know it's a genuine response because now you roll up your sleeves and everybody's wheels are spinning and everybody knows, okay, this is what we're going to do and we could do this. And now that I heard this song and wow, the title, Gasms, wow, that's going to explode. That's going to drive people crazy <laughs> because I can't wait for the reveal, for people to hear how clever. Um, Smokey was with writing these songs. You need me. You fill me up. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Spiritual. So if, if I renew my vows with my wife, yeah. we're doing that. We're playing that for sure. <laughs> You know, for sure, because there's words. When my when my wife first walked down the aisle, it was just an, it was a song, um, a Quincy Jones record, but it was no lyrics. It was just beautiful music. But you know, here we are, thirty years later. That's the words no from that beautiful music. That's everything you feel. You know, that's everything I feel. So that's definitely gonna be what we play. When 
we decided to have the listening party, and especially since we were going to uh, listen to the promotional label, I was curious as to what they were going to think. Or it's always a, it's always a, an anticipation that that can be negative if you let it, <laughs> because you don't know what they're going to think. And like some of this music, <clears throat> like I said, I've been working on it for about five years. And uh, when I decided to do the album in, in Call of Gasms, and, and I, 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 I wanted to insert these songs that I've been working on that had that sort of uh, what-do-you-think connotation about the, <laughs> about the title. <laughs> you know? So um, that, that, that's why... I, I, I did, every title is almost controversial. We live in a world right now where you do 8 million versions of the same song with different rappers on it. Right. You yeah. know? Yeah, and I, that was the question I was going to ask, is like, how open are you to alternative mixes? And Absolutely. Like, 100% yeah, open. I, I even like, I, I noted to April, I was like, dude, this one we got to do an ambient mix for, yeah. for dance radio. Yeah. It was, uh, is it the how you make me feel. Yeah. We have a, uh, a second single that they're playing now from the album, uh, How You Make Me Feel, which was the song that I took to him. And when I took it to him, I, I, I just wanted to see what he would do. And he came up with a sound on it that I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting the sound of it and with the mood bass and all of that. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about, oh, he's going to do the funky track. Right. But he came up with a sound. That's the key. He came up with the sound because that's what he does. <laughs> so I really love it. And it, it, it's one of my favorite songs on the album. That feels amazing. That song, yeah. I heard about Corey. <laughs> and, and I called him because he's produced everybody. He said, you go to his house, and this house, the walls in his house, there's no wallpaper, there's no paint. There's no, his walls are just gold and platinum albums <laughs> on everybody in the music business. You don't, you don't, you don't even see any wall. All you see is gold and platinum albums on everywhere, all over the wall. I mean, I tried to spawn them and they ain't worth nothing, so <laughs> they look nice. <laughs> yeah, but so I found him, so I, I called him and we started because he said, Okay, come to my house and show me what you got. And I, I, I took the song to his house and I and I put it and played it on piano and put it on tape for him, and then he choreized it. <laughs> <laughs> weeks ago and I've just been hoping to hear the music ever since then and it, it's such a treat. The instrumentation is amazing, the lyrics are amazing, the ideas are amazing. I'm definitely, I wrote down one to send to my fiance for our wedding. <laughs> Whenever we say that the date is, we ain't waiting for nothing. You know it's rare that people have <clears throat> like a, a, this record is in the can. It's done. It's mastered. It's done. It's mixed and mastered. That's that's a huge. When I told them that, they were like, "What? <laughs> like, wow, that's a first. So that's it. You know, so you guys were eating. Everybody was eating in there, but you know, you guys introduced yourselves. But like, if you could. Tell Smoke what you do and you know whose role is what because you know now this is your first time hearing it obviously now your wheels can start to spin and we can just figure out you know where we all go from here. Like once you hear the record, there's so many ideas that start spinning with it. Mm -hmm. So now I think we have a lot to chew on to come back to you with mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. suggestions. But why don't we um, why don't we start with you, April? Um, April Pope. Um, I am the head of label management. Um, Jen Ferrer is on my team. She will introduce herself. I don't want to go into it. But um, basically, I work alongside of Sam and her commerce team to help implement the strategy. So once you know all of the plans are delivered to Jen, she and I kind of collate that information together. Work very, very, um, very lovely music, and I'm really looking forward to getting started with you know the entire team. So 
Thank you for the beautiful music. Well, thank you, Katrina. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. She runs the show. <laughs> the release of the titles of the album have been out. I, I you see. See, I'm not. I'm not that um, online savvy. <laughs> you know, I have a great team. You know, being TLR and my team with uh, with uh, Gary and Savon and then Primary Wave, I, and and then uh, all the people who are working on this, the Warner Brother. I have a great team behind me, and I'm so so blessed and so happy about that. And I was very curious as to how they were going to react to it because I, I didn't know if they were going to say, oh, well, here he comes again. This is this, this really good. <laughs> With, okay, yes, yeah, Smokey, this is fine. <laughs> but yeah. thinking all along that it wasn't. But it has been fantastic, the reaction to it. The one and only Smokey Robinson, Mr. Robinson. It's so lovely to meet you and your beautiful wife, Francis. Hello. You nearly broke the internet we, last week when you released the track list for your new album, which is called Gasms. What inspired this title? Tell us more, Mr. Robinson. Well, uh, controversy. I want to be controversial. Okay, but Smokey, who is 82 years old, is dropping a new album, y'all. It's called, this album is called Gasms. Okay, Gasms. Tripping out, okay? Now, let me tell you what some of the song titles of the uh, Gasms album is. It's I Wanna Know Your Body. Uh, Roll Around. And this is my favorite. I can't wait to hear this one. I Fit In There. John! I'm scared. I'm scared, Sherry. I'm, I'm scared. scared. So I didn't realize that in today's world, they released the titles of the songs <laughs> before the album even comes out. Yeah. And people have been asking me all over the country, because we've been traveling doing concerts, about those titles, you know, and, and, and their curiosity as to what the song is about. And you know what I've been saying? Get it. <laughs> Listen to it. And then you'll know. <laughs> right. Hello. It's been a minute, but it's something I want to say right now. I've been watching the young people have their little meltdown about Smokey Robinson making a record called Gasms. Full disclosure, disclosure. I've been in love with Smokey Robinson since birth. I, since the first time I heard him sing, I was a Smokey fan. To paraphrase Bad Girl, one of the first songs I heard him sing, you know, he made me see how love could be. And he did it to pretty music. Smokey invented the quiet storm, soft and warm, quiet as when flowers talk at break of dawn. So now young people are all been out of shape cause this old man is singing love songs and they think it's creepy. He ain't singing to you. <laughs> <laughs> 